from Nashville. Here's Elijah Davis. Andy trying to come up with a straight hustle. Yes. Scotty Pippen Jr. for two. Rattles off. Free ball for Studi. And we're underway with a triple for Vanderbilt. Miles Studi drills it from straight away. Vanderbilt fans obviously very excited to see that three ball go down. Notable, the streak, obviously we've talked about for many decades here in Memorial Gym. Good to see that ball go in for Studi. There's your starting five for Mississippi Valley State. Your top score, you've got Robert Carpenter at 22 points per game. And then Caleb Hunter at 14 points per game. Jump shot is no good that time by Howard. And here's your starting five for Vanderbilt. And the leading scorer on the floor is not Scottie Pippen Jr. to start off the season. That belongs to Jordan Wrights, his 17 points per game. Jordan's been outstanding early in this year. You can tell he's really worked on his body, much more explosive, figuring out ways to be productive on the offensive end. Here's right for three. Second triple of the ball game. This one goes to Jordan Wright. 45 and a half percent this year from the three-point line. Really improved his stroke. Good to see that first one go in for him. You know, we've seen some fantastic stuff from Jordan Wright throughout the course of the first couple of games. We've seen some serious athleticism with those dunks. And now that he's finding, finding the shooting rhythm, that's been an excellent touch as well. Nice dish that time from Laura Brown, but it gets deflected down there. Good length. That is why Howard is in the ball game at seven foot one. On the drive for Hunter, gives it up. Scoop shot off the glass is good for Elijah Davis, the six foot one freshman from Maryland. Elijah Davis, great player right now, 16th in the country in assists, two to one uh, assist to turnover ratio, just a freshman. You saw that great athleticism on that drive. Pippen is searching. Oh, what a great move. Oh, what a great move. How about that from Scotty <laughs> Pippen Jr.? Found himself with some space. It closed down because of the seven footer, but still found the hoop that time. Fancy footwork there in those yellow sneakers. Getting quite the attention. St stayed that uh, step on the floor. That was beautiful that time by Scotty Pippen Jr. Skip pass. Well, good defense so far from Vanderbilt in these first couple of opportunities for Mississippi Valley State. That three ball goes down by Davis, so back-to-back -back buckets here for Elijah Davis. Averages 4.3 points per game in the first three games for Mississippi Valley State, and he's got five so far. Andrew, you talked about it. Vanderbilt, great defense there all the way to the buzzer, but this year, Vanderbilt's playing outstanding defense, leading in several metrics across the country with outstanding defensive play. I think the game that you go back to, Drew, is just the fact that they only gave up 48 points to VCU. Now, most games you're going to win when you only give up 48. That was probably an outlier there. So, head coach for Mississippi Valley State, you've got Lindsey Hunter, the third-year head coach at Mississippi Valley State. Boy, we've got NBA royalty in the house here tonight between Lindsey Hunter and Jerry Stackhouse, a couple of guys that have played together during their NBA days. First free throw is good from Laura Brown. The 1999 and 2000 Detroit Pistons featured both Jerry Stackhouse and Lindsey Hunter. Incredible players. You throw in a little pip and you really do have NBA royalty. Caleb Hunter, Lindsey Hunter's son, playing tonight as well. And don't forget Michael Curry, one of the associate oh. head coaches for Vanderbilt wow. on that team as well. Little three-quarter press here. Pull up jump shots. It's good for Jordan Wright. Jordan Wright showing a great shooting touch. Once again, very effective this year. Leading Vanderbilt in scoring. Really improved his offensive game.
Here's Hunter, pull up jump shot for him. That one rattles off. And Studi gets the rebound for Vanderbilt. Right looking for space again. This one with the kick. Out to Studi. Pippen bobbles and it's picked off. Here comes Davis and Mississippi Valley State. The Delta Devils can't finish at the rim. That time it was Carpenter. Great Into the corner out. for three. Everything but the shot that time for Miles Studi. Carpenter for three. Shot clock. Yeah, down to three here. Davis has been the star Great so far defense. in this one, but good defense. Boy, we keep coming back to that for Vanderbilt. It has been good so far against Mississippi Valley State. It's been pretty good so far this 21-22 season. Yeah, you, you noted it, Andrew. Robert Carpenter, the leading scorer for Mississippi Valley State, 22 points, 50% from the three-point line, 0 for 4 here early in this game. Three ball. From the corner. Scotty Pippen one on two. Takes it on Davis, loses the basketball, and it's out of bounds off of the Delta Devils. And back to Vanderbilt. Well, a substitution here for head coach Jerry Stackhouse. As Quentin Melora Brown goes to the bench and Jermaine Mann, the transfer from Gardner Webb, into the ball game. Nice little set. Good cuts. Just couldn't finish, but Lawrence to the free throw line for a couple of shots. Great drive there. You can see that Vanderbilt did a great job. Ran a nice little set, little rub screen. Able to get Tyron Lawrence a driving angle to the basket. Nice little left handed shot. Got the bump, got the foul. Two shots at the free throw line. Hey, worth noting to our three officials here tonight, Pat Adams, Todd Austin, and Doug Sermons. That is a fantastic crew. You're talking about guys that have officiated Final Fours throughout the course of their career. Yeah, big time officiating crew. Vanderbilt fans will know many of the, those guys. And they've seen them for many years in this building. So Fandy leads this game by nine points. Good steal. Foul goes against Caleb Hunter. Scotty Pippen has outstanding hands. Ten steals on the season, averaging two a game. Just great deflection guy. Always has active hands, similar to a, maybe his father. Yeah, just a little bit, huh? <laughs> you know, I think what's impressed me so much about Scotty Pippen Jr., and not necessarily that this is new, but he can fill up a box score in a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to be with 20, 25 points. He certainly can do that, but he's a factor with steals, assists. He's a factor with rebounds. <laughs> that was a fastball into the front row here. Todd Alston looking for a little help, and <laughs> Pat Adams said, no, it didn't touch a defender. Everybody get out of the way of that one. <laughs> I think we've got some conversations about the clocks here. So the one that is on the ribbon board shows 12.59. The clocks that are right over the top of the buckets 
They say 1227. So the slowdown at the moment is to correct the clocks. There you go. Time is being kept above the basket, so they defer to 1227. And I would suspect that Jerry Stackhouse and these coaches probably want, if they're not going to keep it up there, the clocks to come off, right, so their players don't get confused. There you go. I mean, Andrew, they're just listening to you. You just make that call, snap your finger, and boom, it happened. Worst decision that they've made throughout <laughs> the course of tonight. Listen to anything that I've got to say. I defer to you, all things basketball. <laughs> yeah. You've got the game from here on out, right? <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> Great double team off the ball screen. You can see Vanderbilt really making a concerted effort of blitzing those ball screens, really putting a lot of pressure on those handlers, creating another turnover. So far, three turnovers for the Delta Devils, as Bandy's got three turnovers as well. Well, Jordan Wright with five points so far. Lawrence has two. As Scotty Pippen, it's off the floor at the moment for Bandy. In transition. Knocked out of bounds. Offer, you probably feel like you've got a skill set if you're Vanderbilt that's above your opponent, but you have to continue to match that intensity regardless of the jersey. These can be difficult games psychologically between the years. Very, very difficult. You have a big win at Pittsburgh the night before Thanksgiving. You go to the holiday. You eat a lot of turkey. You have hot, kind of off your rhythm, off your schedule. You come back and you're you're just a little bit lethargic. You're, you're, you're having a hard time getting your rhythm, getting your sea legs beneath you. Here's Carpenter. Doubling that ball screen again. Great the rotation. That one goes through. That triple falls for Robert Carpenter. First bucket of the ball game for the team's leader in scoring 22 points. Zero points per game so far through three games for Robert Carpenter, his first three. Robert Carpenter was outstanding at Ole Miss last week. 27 points, five three-point made baskets. Here's Frank. Just wouldn't go on the strong floater. Another triple attempt, and that one's strong from Carpenter. The stick back is good. That's Gary Grant, the six foot six freshman from New York. Averages 7.3 points per game, his first bucket there. He's one for two from the floor. Something to pay close attention to, Andrew. Last week in the Ole Miss game, Mississippi Valley State had four players play over 30 minutes, so not much depth. Vanderbilt continues to rotate through different guys throughout the course of this game. Depth will become an issue. That's out to Lawrence for three. Just missed. And he's two for five from three-point range so far this evening. A couple of substitutions as Scotty Pippen Jr. comes back into the game. And Shane Disoni checks into the ball game for head coach Jerry Stackhouse. Tough shot. Almost went too. We'll see if Mississippi Valley State continues to run ball screen action. Vanderbilt blitzing those ball screens, meaning they're putting two defenders on the handler, making uh, him make tough decisions out of those out of that ball screen action. Why do you think that's been the choice from Coach Stacko so far tonight? Yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a young backcourt, uh, a freshman uh, point guard in Elijah Davis. Caleb Hunter, just a sophomore, so I think you're trying to take a little bit of advantage uh, of the lack of experience of playing out of double teams. You can see here you go again. You got another double team. Almost created another turnover. Almost amazing that it oh. didn't, and maybe more amazing that it finishes in a bucket for Mississippi Valley State, another bucket for Gary Grant. Pippen. 
Pippen for three. Just a little strong. Here's Davis again with the skip pass and a three ball. Boy, Mississippi Valley State has been physical down low these last couple of possessions. Gary Grant has given them great minutes in off the bench. Great energy, two baskets already. Another great attempt there with outstanding hustle, creating a second chance uh, opportunity. Well, just a six point ball game here with seven and a half to go Good in the pass. first half. Frank for three. Knocked out of bounds by Davis. And it stays with Vanderbilt in just a couple of seconds when we return. 18 to 12 is our score. Scotty Pippen Jr. has four points so far. Here's two of them. Welcome back, glad you could join us here tonight. Andrew Alec alongside Drew Maddox, our score. Vanderbilt with the advantage, 18 to 12. Drew, some statistics here. Vanderbilt does lead in rebounds, 15 to 9, but you've noted the energy off the bench of Gary Grant. Yeah, Gary Grant's given great minutes so far. Seven minutes in this game, three offensive rebounds, five total rebounds, four points. He's really been the most energizing player on the floor tonight. Out of bounds off of the Delta Devils. I think that was Grant again with that block shot. Again, Gary Grant, six foot six, a freshman forward from the Queens, New York. Sure was. Yeah. Right behind Frank. Eight seconds to shoot here. Thomas on the drive. Scoop shot is Great. good. Nice stop. Trey Thomas finishes with the right. He said, I can do so much more than just make three point baskets. I know you guys talked about my triples <laughs> in the pregame. I'm going to show you this move on the drive. Great drive against the end of the shot clock as well. Here's Carpenter. And it's a carry. So, Mississippi Valley State turnover number five. We got a second look at Trey Thomas's finish. Look at that. That was big time. Basket, nice drive and finish. Little dipsy do. 2 3 zone for Mississippi Valley State out of that underneath out of bounds. Great finish. Trey Thomas, just a sophomore. Thomas for three. Have a foul coming up against Vanderbilt. It goes against Taryn Frank. You know what I love right there, though, Andrew, on that play? Jerry Stackhouse is such a player's coach. It plays uh, and, and makes calls based on the feel of the game. Trey Thomas, great game last game, makes a nice bucket right there. Call, call his number again. Let's see if we can get him another shot. Yep, get it right back to him. And in the same exact spot that he made the previous move. That would not go down for Carpenter who continues to struggle so far. One for nine so far for the team's leading score, averaging 22 points per game. On the drive, that is no good rolls off, spills off for DeZoni. Vanderbilt back defensively in transition very nicely. Five minutes, 45 seconds to go here in the first half. Doors lead this one by eight points. Here's Grant slicing. Couldn't finish. Good defense at the bucket by Grant that time. Physical screen by Scotty Pippen Jr. there. I think he leaned into it, huh? Well, as much as the officials <laughs> yeah. will allow him to. Look at this. Wow. Yeah, he leaned in. Yeah. Gets the ball back. Nice drive. Ready for contact for sure. <laughs> Embracing the contact. Maybe that's the better way to say it. Scotty Pippen Jr. embraced the contact that time. Dangerous inbounds pass. Good catch by Thomas. Oh 
Did it look like Thomas kind of got himself in a situation where he didn't know exactly what he wanted to do with that <laughs> basketball at the last seconds? Just put his head down and started to drive. Almost found himself in no man's land and didn't know quite what to do with the ball. Yeah, he got to the block and he said, I don't know if I want to finish. I don't know if I want to kick. And he ends up turning it over. Been impressed with Elijah Davis, just a freshman. Came into this game averaging six assists a game. He plays with great tempo, great poise, just a freshman. Good finish there for the Delta Devils. I've liked his confidence too. Yeah. It seems to be very strong for someone coming into this gym considering the set. Boy, the touch has not been there for Vanderbilt so far on the floaters throughout the course of tonight's ball game. It's just a six-point ball game, Drew, here with four and a half to go in the first half. Vandy 20 to 14 over Mississippi Valley State at 0 and 3 so far to, uh, this season. Look at that pass. Elijah Davis is an outstanding passer. That's going to be offensive. Yes. Good take that time by Melora Brown. What a great pass. Able to see the offside corner driving to the strong side. He zipped that ball out the backside. Elijah Davis now getting a break. See who will handle the basketball for Mississippi Valley State. Well, Davis comes in with 18 assists so far this season. That does lead the Delta Devils throughout the course of the year. Good pass. Good finish. Melora Brown gets the bucket. His second bucket of the ball game. Has a couple of free throws. His first field goal here tonight. Beautiful drive and kick. Occupying the Offside short corner. Melora Brown with the finish. Mississippi Valley State, Andrew, is going to have to go away from the ball screens. They're, they're continuing to struggle against this double. I saw it though, right? <laughs> we looked it up. So, morning. Hardaway, who else was on that team? That was a really good he had, Miami Heat team. Yeah, Dan Marley, Thunder Dan oh. was on that team. Really good basketball team. Who was your guy growing up? You watched who the most here in this Nashville area? Uh, who did you gravitate I to? I mean, it, it, when we were growing up, it was Larry Bird, Magic yeah. Johnson, and, and Michael Jordan, of course. But I, I love the Detroit Piston teams, too. Grow, I mean, I, I kind of gravitated to the bad boys. I liked Isaiah Thomas like, and Joe Dumars yeah. and, and uh, you know, uh, John Sally and Dennis Rodman, Rick Mahorn. I could go on and on. Those are good picks. You <laughs> cannot go wrong with those. Nineteen ninety-eight all SEC team. Oh, look at that. Nice picture. Much younger looking Drew Maddox. If you and I played a hoops game right now, you would beat me by how many points? A <laughs> hundred. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you're supposed to be modest, no, like, oh, goodness, I think you could give me a run. Yeah. No, there's the competitive fire. <laughs> like, right. you're only a season removed from being a head coach. <laughs> you have still got it burning in there. I like it. We played this morning, as a matter of fact. A lot of former Vanderbilt players. We still get together 6 a.m., three days a week, all these years later. That's the best, though. Isn't it? Like, that's a part of the whole thing. You guys are going to be friends forever. That's and I think. I think whether it's Clark Lee or Coach Stackhouse or take your pick, Coach Corbin, you're going to do these great things on the field and then give it 20 years. Whatever it happens to be, you guys are still going to get together and talk about whatever it is. Studi for three. No, but that ball did not go in, but I love seeing the extra pass made by Thomas out of the corner. Looked like he was out of bounds. Looked like Grant was on the baseline out of bounds. That's where the baseline bench actually comes into play. The coach has had an outstanding viewpoint. Triple attempt is good for Carpenter. So, whether they missed that call yeah. or not, the Delta Devils benefit from it. 
Andrew, that's the basketball gods always punish you on stuff like that. When, when an official misses a call, it is amazing how that ball goes in every time. I swore I heard the phrase, the ball don't lie. It's not supposed to go in. <laughs> yeah. They try again, Carpenter. Carpenter's not shy on getting his attempts up. Definitely ready to shoot the basketball. Here's Trey Thomas for three. Well, Vanderbilt is just three for 13 from distance so far tonight. Does it not seem like there's been so many balls that have squirted out? Halfway down, <laughs> it just popped right out. It's been those floaters that I've been found yeah. I, I've found to be a little bit surprising. They've, they've got halfway down for Scotty Pippen. They've gotten halfway down for a couple of different players. And again, look, 52 seconds to go here in the first half. And I think we feel like Vanderbilt, from a talent standpoint, has established that they've got some distance with the Delta Devils. But when it comes to the scoreboard, I mean, it's a six-point game yeah. with 50 seconds to go here in the first half. This was a Mississippi Valley State team that had Ole Miss down by seven at the half. So uh, they're a team that will fight. They're going to compete. They've come in here with great energy. Miles Studi cans it from the right corner. Nine-point advantage with 30 seconds to go first half. Studi started this game with a three-point made basket. Looks like he may close this half with another made three-point basket. Well, just a two-second difference here between game clock and shot clock. Drive and kick. And it's taken away. Three seconds, two seconds on the The city, the league, the degree, and the facility. And the facility now. Drop the mic on that one. Lawrence. It has just been tough sledding throughout the course of tonight. That was a good look. Well, just three for 13 here for Vanderbilt on triple attempts throughout the course of the night. Lawrence is 0 for 2. You can see the held ball there. One three-pointer for Wright, two three-pointers for Studi. That's it. Here's the triple attempt for the Delta Devils. That comes up short that time. Caleb Hunter couldn't connect. See if Vanderbilt can get some good ball movement here. Maybe a paint win, a paint touch, either through penetration, through a post entry, swing the ball a couple of times and get some more rhythm on the offensive end. Scotty Pippen Jr. turns the corner. Nothing there. Out to Studi for three. There it is. Miles Studi. There we go. His third triple of the night. Well, we saw Scotty Pippen try to search. You get that paint touch. You get yep. the kick out, which is good. But look, you do have a seven footer in the middle. How much does that change things for Scotty Pippen and anybody else that tries to drive for Vanderbilt looking for their shot? Yeah, I, and, and I think that's what I love about Scotty Pippen Jr. the most is. You know, obviously, he comes in, he's a player of the year candidate, didn't force the shot there. I mean, he, he, he takes what the defense gives him, does a great job. You can see that he, he stayed down, used his pivots, won the paint. Great kick out to Studi again with his third triple on the night. Boy, you can see that across the country, too. How about Chet Holcomb for Gonzaga? Oh, the wow. way that he changes ball games. Duke obviously still gets that victory in a heavyweight bout a couple of nights ago, but you get yourself a seven-footer in the middle that can really change things. That is a huge defensive asset. And it, doesn't it seem, Andrew, like the seven-footer has changed, too? They're so much more versatile. They're much more athletic. They play so much more rangy. It's not this stiff guy that just is stuck down on the block. No, it's like you're a step-out seven-footer, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll take the seven-footer, but only if he can knock down a three. Just like that from Miles Studi, his fourth of the ball game. 
Another big shot. Four three-point baskets tonight. Studi with another made three. I mean, I know, Drew, that you practice shooting all of the time. If you had a seven-footer, is he still out there stepping out and knocking down? No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> if, no doubt. If you're going to play basketball, especially for Drew Maddox, you're going to knock down some shots. <laughs> Nate Studi really in good rhythm tonight. You can see his fourth three-point basket on the night. Four for six from the three-point line with uh, 12 points here in the game. So he's got 13 triples made so far this season. Here's his triple attempt by Carpenter that skips off the cylinder. Carpenter just two for 11, now two for 12, two for nine from the three-point line. Really struggling tonight. Came into this game 50% from three, 22 points per game. Really struggling tonight with only six points. And like you talked about it, this was a team that really kept it close with Old Miss a couple of nights ago. Carpenter was a huge part of it. So the fact that he has struggled throughout the course of tonight's a major factor for Mississippi Valley States. Ole Miss used a 15-0 run to begin the second half the other night to really start to separate themselves. Vanderbilt, you feel like just on the urge of doing that. Uh, two made three-point baskets from Studi. You feel like they're about to break free, get, get a little more energy. Well, it's not 15 to nothing so far, but a 6-0 run to start off the half here for Fanner, but we'll see if that continues. Vanderbilt's so sound defensively. I mean, there is no driving lanes. They do a great job of gap control, no penetration, rotate, and then block out and rebound the basketball. Great defense. We've got four on four hoops. Yeah, that was Howard and Jordan Wright that were caught up behind the play a second ago. Hunter with the pass, uh, bounce pass intercepted by Lawrence and a foul. And a very frustrated behind the play, Lindsey Hunter, the third year head coach of Mississippi Valley State. You know, look, we've talked about kind of the sluggish play throughout the course of this ball game. We can get into the shooting percentages. That's fine, as you see kind of the uh, motions of the night. <laughs> Take center stage for Coach Hunter, but I think right back to your point, the way that Vanderbilt has played defense may be an underrated part of this ball game because they have been a factor defensively from start to finish. Yeah, Lindsey Hunter definitely frustrated, slammed his hand against the mat there, against the basket. Number five, Miles Studi again. That's just way too open for a guy that's already made four three-point baskets tonight. That's just a horse shot over there on the left corner. Which is going down every time was Trey Thomas tonight. Six of 17, five of them by Studi. Yeah, 9 0 run to begin this half. All Studi with three made three-point baskets. Look at the steal. Here's Lawrence. Start to finish, Lawrence by himself with the steal, coast to coast, and a good strong finish at the cup. 11-0 run. Just four short of the revs. Here's Carpenter. And a blocking foul is called against Vanderbilt. Well, how about Lawrence? Again, totaling by himself here. Carpenter just a little bit casual and a good finish. Lawrence is so long and rangy, very athletic, averaging eight points on the season. Great steal and basket for him. Yeah, six foot four, a sophomore from Georgia has that good, like to say, good length, can get in there and sneak up with the steal. I think that's what adds to Vanderbilt's ability on the defensive end is the, the way that they can switch. You know, everybody's kind of in that range of 6'3 to 6'6, six, 6'7. Six, six, They're able to switch screens. It makes it very difficult for the offense. You know, that's kind of a defensive mindset at this point these days, right? You need somebody that can play the four all the way to the one. The only position that feels different is the five. Outside of that, you need to kind of go one through four with switches. Correct, correct. Really, Golden State Warriors, Steve Kerr was the first one with Draymond Green that began to do that. 
a couple of years ago when they started their championship run. Now they're blocking foul is called against Vanderbilt. This goes against Melora Plout, his Ooh. second personal foul. It's a little bit close. <laughs> <laughs> Officials, you, you, you won't hear from me unless I was on the sideline, then you would hear a lot from me. But that being said, uh, not quite sure about that call there. Neither is Coach Stackhouse. <laughs> Coach Hunter's fine. Put him at the line. Yeah. <laughs> Again, we do have a fantastic crew tonight. Regardless of your thoughts of that call, whatever, it's a fantastic crew with Pat Adams, Todd Austin, and Doug Sermon, guys that have done Final Fours throughout the course of their career. And everybody that's a basketball fan just said the classic line after the call that you do not like, which was, the ball don't lie. <laughs> that's correct. Oh my God, what a sequence. <laughs> You know what, let's just sit back. Let's soak in. Vanthe versus Mississippi Valley State. Just let it wash all over you. You know what, it reminds me of the July 4th, you know, in the swimming pool with the, the slippery watermelon trying to get it to the side. I was going to call it rugby, but sure. Yeah. Just everything but the tackle. <laughs> Got him in the face. Looked like a pretty clean contest until he kind of came forward and got Scotty Pippen Jr. in the face. Maybe this made free throw. We'll get him, get him back, get some rhythm, get some confidence going tonight. Yeah, just six points so far for Scotty Pippen Jr. You know, I think what stunned us about the BCU game, and look, the Rams played fantastic defense, so give them credit, but almost never does Scottie Pippen Jr. go for single digits. In fact, a season ago, the only game he had in single digits at the very end of the regular season against Old Miss, and he did it against BCU. I don't know if he's going to stay in single digits here tonight, but just seven against Mississippi Valley State. Oh, but Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> off for the Delta Devils turnover number 14 to here tonight Vanderbilt's got nine of those it is just such a weird portion of the schedule though yeah. like in all honesty it's a weird portion you get the enthusiasm of tip off with the beginning part of November you're not the conference play yet. You're coming off of the holidays. A lot of kids don't have classes right now. It's just such an awkward it time. Is. And you can see these are humans out there, so you can see why it translates to some clunky play. Studi couldn't connect. For number six. Go ahead. Right on throw. Go Marlo ahead and Studi. shoot it again. Book it. Love it. What a great pass by Lawrence from the baseline all the way to the top of the key for that basket. Six three-point baskets tonight. So it's not 15 to 1. There it is. Scotty Pippen Jr. It's 19 to 1 to start off this second half here for Vanderbilt. Not 15 to nothing, yeah. but 19 to 1. You talked about the Old Miss stretch to start off the second half against these guys. Vanderbilt with their own counter punch. 45 to 18, midway through second half. Miles Studi, stupendous here tonight. Nine triples throughout the course of the season. He's got six. Drew, what's been so good about his shot? You know something about shooting. What has been so good about his shot here tonight? I think the one thing that I love to see is just the catch and the release, especially that last one. He had just missed the previous shot. Ball swings back around. Great pass from Lawrence from the baseline to the top of the key. No hesitation on that shot. Catch, release, splash. Studi. 18 points on six made three-point baskets tonight. And the first Vanderbilt Commodore with six three-pointers in a ball game since 
Scotty Pippen Jr. against Davidson a season ago, late December. Little switch to Vanderbilt's defensive strategy here, a little zone look. Great Good block. rejection, huh? Well, this ball game was 27, 26 to 17, excuse me, at the break. And it's 45 to 18, a singular free throw to start this second half here for the Delta Devils. What a block. Good job by Jermaine Mann. That is perfectly done. You see that verticality straight up to the ceiling. Use your length. Didn't come across the plane and, and foul the shooter. Great block. Well, what a fantastic addition Jermaine Mann has been to this team throughout the course of the season. A transfer from Gardner Webb, six points per ball game, about six rebounds per ball game. Adds himself a block right there. Vanderbilt back in that zone look. Go ahead, Studi. Studi. I love that he took that shot, though. I love that. Yeah, Miles Studi with 18 points. The Delta Devils with 18 points. Scotty Pippen Jr. And he's got double digits here tonight now. Great finish. Such a strong finisher of the basketball, especially on the fast breaks. Gets vertical, gets to the rim, uses his body so well. Great finisher. Back to that man-to-man -man defense here for Vanderbilt, I think. That triple goes down for the Delton Devils. Caleb Hunter knocks it down, the sophomore from Michigan. That's his first made basket, I believe, on the night. He was 0 for 7 before that made shot. There's a foul on the floor that brings up. When you're looking early on in this season, you're looking across the league. The SEC this year uh, compares to the Big Ten, I would say, as the top two basketball conferences. Obviously, SEC, it's a lot of football action. But basketball is no joke this year. Did you just nudge that above the ACC? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Well, we saw hands it. again. Out of bounds here for Jordan Wright. Just for some context, <laughs> Duke did take over the number one spot yes. of the country here today after they took down a Gonzaga. And you got Carolina, of course, top 25. But other than those two at this moment, I believe there are no other top 25 teams. What is some you, research? May to, you may have to check me on what that. What is some research? But I believe I'm right. I always trust Evandy. <laughs> And then do a comparative analysis against the SEC top 25. And see what you come up with, Andrew. I, I think I'm right on this one. Here's how I know that you're a Vanderbilt guy. Instead of just saying, let's compare the oh. SEC and the <laughs> ACC, you said, let's do a comparative <laughs> analysis. <laughs> All right, the research department is pulling it up as we speak. Studi with 19. If he makes this one right here, he'll join and be our fourth 20-point score on the year. Count it. Well, certainly a well-deserved round of applause here for Miles Studi as he goes to the bench with 20 points. 11 minutes left in this ball game. Six for 11 from the floor, all six of those three-point shots. In fact, I don't see North Carolina in the top 25 either, unless I missed it. So the ACC may only have the top team in all the, the country, and that may be the only one. That's what I've got. You doubted me. Well, you were wrong. You said North Carolina was in. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Forgive me for that. Yeah. The SEC has Kentucky, Arkansas, Tennessee, Florida, Alabama, Auburn, 
six. I thought I was right on this one. Spot on. Six pointer forcing 18 turnovers a game coming into this game. Mississippi Valley State, 15 turnovers on the night. Five to shoot. Good offensive board right there for Disoni. Well, finish what, you're, if you, what you started there if you're Disoni. No. Yeah, which is a dribble off his foot. Oh, no. Goodness. I think you jinxed him right there. My apologies. <laughs> Is that our Shane Foster look-alike? <laughs> is, that, is that what I heard? I, I, I think Shane and his wife even posted something about that on social media, if I'm not mistaken. You know, what would it be if we didn't have somebody that at least looks like Shane Foster yeah. as part of our podcast? <laughs> we, really, we, we really need a cardboard cutout. We can do all of these live shots with, with three of us here, even when Sha, uh, Shane isn't here <laughs> in spirits. Congratulations to, it was announced, I guess late last week that uh, Shane's jersey is going to get retired here at Vanderbilt. Well deserved for sure. No doubt. Amazing. As great of a basketball player as he is and was, an even better human being. Fantastic. Unbelievable friend of mine. Uh, unbelievable what he's doing in the Nashville community and also across the region. Uh, Shane Foster, well deserved. I love that Vanderbilt moved in that direction. Surprised him at practice, I believe, yes. with that announcement. Everything but the finish for man. Now foul goes against Caleb Hunter here. Had a great little stretch too for Shane, something that we noted in some of our previous uh, broadcasts, the fact that his high school outside of New Orleans in Kenner, Louisiana, Bonneville High School uh, hung his jersey into the Raptors. They had retired it a season ago, but because of COVID, they couldn't do the ceremony until this year. So a good little stretch and certainly well deserved for Shane. So the athleticism of man right there, jumping up to grab that alley-oop pass and transition. I love that the officials gave a little leniency right there. Didn't go with the technical foul of hanging on the rim. I think there was a safety concern about him swinging, maybe falling. Great job by our officials. Second free throw for Disoni. That hit man in the face and then come back <laughs> I think so. to Elijah Davis. <laughs> Into the corner for Carpenter. Still struggling. Yeah, just one of those nights for him, huh? Well, Vanderbilt is on the verge of holding two opponents this season to under 50 points. The last time they did that in the same season, 2016 and 20 games in the next couple of days. Enjoy yourself, sir. It is my, my birthday gift to myself. I'm headed to Golden State to the Chase Center. Against Phoenix, huh? Yes. Two best teams in the NBA. Should be a lot of fun. And transition. Foul coming up against Frank. So McCoy to the free throw line for a couple of shots. The senior, a transfer from Southern Miss into Hattiesburg. It's almost great defense. It looked like the offensive player, David McCoy there, created the contact. Jumped into the defender. It's the foul on the body. Her shot is good. Drew Weikert coming into the game. A blistering one for two from three points throughout the course of the season. I should have rephrased that. A blistering 50% from three. That's, That's right. right. 
Drew's dad was an outstanding player, now an unbelievable hand doctor here at Vanderbilt Medical Center. Dr. Doug Weikert. Drew was a great high school player at NBA right down the street. Really just the best school in all of Nashville, right? NBA, the best school in Nashville. <laughs> Nowhere else, no other school would be better than that. Clearly, NBA is at the top. We couldn't even put anybody else in the conversation. Isn't that right, Drew? You're really <laughs> trying to get my blood pressure really <laughs> at an all-time high level here, Andrew. I love it. I love NBA. I love the people in NBA. Uh-huh. You're, you're going to request to not work with me in the future. <laughs> That's going to be fun. NBA has two former Vanderbilt grads as their basketball coaches, Kevin England and Ronnie McMahon. Unbelievable job over there at NBA. State champions last year. We're great players here in this building for certain. In all seriousness, you did a fantastic job throughout the course of your coaching career just down the road. Huh? I did. I, I, I had a lot of fun. How about that? We yes. 15 years, a ton of fun. We we do love our school, though. Yes. We do. No, you did a fantastic job. There's no <laughs> doubt. You know, the cool part with the Vanderbilt tie to Christ Presbyterian Academy is three seniors are committed to come to Vanderbilt next year in three different sports. Caroline Betts is going to join the women's soccer team. Cade Law, our starting quarterback in the state championship this week, but also uh, outstanding baseball player joining Coach Corbin. And then Langston Patterson, linebacker, going to join Clark Lee and his team next year. Ten seconds left to shoot. Great move. Oh, that's that's gotta a, that's a goal ten. Got, got to be goal ten. So two points for Trey Thomas. That was a great move. Hesitation dribble. Got it to the glass. Carpenter just a little bit too late. Triple attempts. That one goes through. So David McCoy, the lefty from the corner. McCoy with seven points off the bench. A six foot senior from Meridian, Mississippi. Here's Carpenter. Boy, it goes to the free throw line, but again, just one of those nights for the team's leader in scoring. Just seven points for Carpenter, averages 22 points per game. He's two for 16 from the floor and two for 11 for three point range. That'll hurt his season average coming into this game. 22 points, 50% from three coming into tonight's game. Well, next up for Mississippi Valley State, it's on the road on Wednesday. A trip to North Alabama is up next for the Delta Devils. Of course, Vanderbilt has a trip to Dallas to take on SMU coming up in a couple of days. Great shot. Good finish by Frank. Speaking of Texas, a TCU transfer. Outstanding drive and finish takes the contact, finishes the basket, chance to go to the free throw line to complete the three point play. He and Scotty Pippen Jr. were high school teammates. Yes, sir. Sierra Cannon High School. Right there in Los Angeles, huh? Well, I don't know if we're going to get there, but as you take a look at all of the connections, that is just, that's remarkable. Just, I mean, it's remarkable. Are you talking about the work of our production crew to get that queued up like all that? That, that? That was amazing. And then when you see all the list, incredible. Yes. And obviously, you know, Bronny James there now. 
Uh, I think, I believe he's a junior, if I'm not mistaken, there at Sierra Canyon. So Frank back to the free throw line here. I don't know if we're going to get to this, but Mississippi Valley State 25% shooting throughout the course of the ball game. The last time Vanderbilt held an opponent's under 25%, December 2nd, back in 2015 against Detroit, won that ball game 102 to 52, as Detroit shot 23% that day. Icy cold. Wow. And one other thing that I think is worth at least touching on again, Drew, you've talked about the defense throughout the course of the ball game for Vanderbilt, 13 turnovers in every single ball game that they've forced. Here against Mississippi Valley State, they've forced 16 turnovers tonight. I believe that's what makes this team so much more improved as we head through December into the conference season. The ability to play lockdown defense will give them a chance in every game where they didn't put so much pressure on the offensive end to score baskets as it did last year. Daniel Amo checks into the ball game, a freshman from Nigeria. Averages four rebounds per game, 1.3 points per game. Nice rebound by Frank. Good finish by Frank. So Taron Frank gets the bucket. He's got four points here tonight to go with his four rebounds. It was a great drive. He had a lot of speed going to the basket. He jump stopped, kept his feet on the ground, didn't travel. Finished that for two points. Two on three. Out for three. Yes, right on through. Gabe Dorsey, the freshman from Maryland, trails it from distance. Good looking stroke. Love the kick out from Thomas there, finding his running mate. Nice lefty stroke, three points. Had to coach against him a couple times. It, it's, it's a tough matchup. Not fun. Hey, a quick note too that Graham Calton has checked into the ball game, a freshman six foot five out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Plus, Drew Weikert is on the floor too. So, some good minutes here with 3.15 to go for a couple of guys that don't typically come off the bench. Triple attempt by Carpenter is off. He's two for 14 from three point range here tonight. You have to admire that he's taken 20 shots on the evening, two for 20. Keep I mean, shooting it, young man. I mean, talk about a green light from Coach Hunter. Yes. Here's Colton. Look good. Boy, the bench wanted it in a big way. McCoy on the kick out. Rebound by Colton. Crowd loves it. The bench loves <laughs> it big time by the freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Couple of shots here for Thomas with 2.12 to go in the ball game. Well, the story tonight, no doubt about it, Drew, it was the shooting of Miles Studi. He was excellent. He was the fire that got this whole thing going. Six triples here tonight for Miles Studi. He had nine throughout the course of the season. He's up to 15 because of his performance here tonight. The fourth 20-point score in a ball game for Vanderbilt here this season. Pippen, Wright, Thomas, and now Studi. Yeah, Studi really got the energy going the second half, went on his own 9-0 run with three made triples to get the second half off to a good start. Vanderbilt went on to have a 19 to one run. Kind of put the, put the game out of reach at that point. 
you know, a question that I asked you earlier, but I'll ask it again just for the sake of it. What has made his shots so dangerous throughout the course of this season? Because he is obviously somebody that's been jumping off the page throughout the course of these first six games here for Vanderbilt as a dangerous, dangerous three-point option. Yeah, I think a uh, couple of things. One is he's a confident shooter, uh, will, willing to take the next shot. Make or miss, I shoot the next right shot. Uh, two, uh, just his ability to get squared up. I, I, I was really impressed with even the ones that he missed, but every one of his attempts were quality attempts. Received the basketball, jumped up, catch, receive, shoot it, and live with this, with what the outcome is going to be. And I think the third thing is um, he has a great shooting stroke. Just the mechanics of his shot makes you very confident that he's going to make the next shot that he shoots. But what a fantastic player the sophomore from Washington, D.C. has been throughout the course of the season. Weikert, 33% from three this season. Here's Hunter. Let's try again. DeZoni. Right on through. Shane DeZoni, the freshman from Pennsylvania. Swish. That was a great looking stroke as well. Drew Weikert with the assist. I wanted the Weikert to Calton alley -oop. They, yeah. ha they had the numbers <laughs> for like half a second. Oh, what a smart play. That's out of bounds. That was outstanding. What a, what a smart basketball play. By Calton. Good stuff by the freshman from Charlotte, huh? He realizes that Carpenter is out of bounds. He just tips it right off of him. I mean, that is going to earn you minutes again <laughs> at some point during the season, somewhere. Weicker. Weicker drills it. A triple for Weicker. Back to 50%. Two for four on the season. Well, the shot clock is off, and Vanderbilt is on its way to its fifth win of the season. They'll move to 5-1. Mississippi Valley State will go to 0-4. And, of course, for Fanning, a trip to Dallas to take on SMU is coming up in the next couple of days. Final three seconds. Here's Davis.